G'day and welcome to the Jade Rat. Thank you uh, again for tuning in. Uh, today we're going to talk about a book that I read about a month ago, finished, um, and I've had about one month to mull over it and I, I'm going to give you my review. And that is Dawn Thief by uh, James Barclay and it is part one of three in the Raven Chronicles um, and it is a fantasy uh, book or trilogy um, and this is the first one and I'm currently reading the second one, Noonshade and finally Night Child um, and I really enjoyed this book and, I, and I, I'll give it a uh, final score of 82% or so 82 out of 100 um, and it is it's a fantasy book that combines sort of the uh, action and adventure of a standard fantasy but it also has a slightly darker tale like a uh, little bit grittier a little bit more uh, violent um, and it's a really interesting premise actually um, the story itself, I won't get into spoilers at the moment, um, and uh, so far it's pretty much an uh, ensemble piece, uh, and it involves a group of mercenaries called the Raven, and it follows their story as, it, as they go on to um, essentially uh, save their country, or uh, their world as they know it and it's uh, a little bit slow at the start which is why I took some points off so uh, the points that I removed were for uh, a little bit of a slow start so it's about 400 pages I believe it is 470 484 pages long 400 it's about that thick and um, it, it sort of involves about 50 pages in, it sort of starts to pick up a little bit. And the start is a little bit slow, a little bit boring, and it's the same as any other fantasy series where you're trying to wrap your head around uh, the magic system, the uh, world that it's set in, the sort of society that everything's set in, and of course the main characters. Uh, it doesn't start off with just a single character it's got um, more it's it's about seven perhaps a bit more um, and they they all sort of uh, intertwine at the start and there's there's characters that you uh, think are unrelated at the start and then as the story progresses it sort of unravels itself and it's very interesting uh, it's got a little bit of a mystery aspect to it particularly with one of the characters who has a very interesting story arc I think and um, the best part about this book is that if you read it just by itself it's perfectly fine it's a good standalone book uh, it has a beginning, middle and an end and if you finished reading the first book it's not necessary to read the other two. Um, it's what I found out, it's sort of the, there's not really a cliffhanger that's addressed until the second book and it, and it is related of course. Um, the events of the first and the second are pretty much straight after each other but the problem is not presented as a cliffhanger so you're not obligated to read the second book uh, if you uh, don't want to so that's what I originally picked up and I really like that part because I'm a kind of person who if I buy a book and then I see it's part of a series I feel sort of obligated to uh, follow through with the series so in this situation it's good if you if you like a standalone a fantasy it's got a lot of interesting elements to it and you don't want that uh, sort of necessity of following through 
with the rest of the series. So that's great. And the best thing within the book itself is there's a good plausible magic system. So it, it makes sense. It's explained it well and not in a uh, boring way. At least I didn't find it boring. Um, and they sort of highlight essentially the limits and what magic can and can't do and uh, it's referred to in an understandable way um, and that's pretty much the uh, the really good things about it without getting into spoilers and the uh, negatives a couple of things that I took off were um, there were one or two scenes that I didn't quite like uh, I didn't one of those scenes um, I didn't like but I understood why it was necessary for the motivations of the characters involved and um, ultimately reading the second book it makes more sense uh, and also uh, there was one other scene that I didn't like because I just didn't like one of the characters um, who I I will explain later in the uh, spoiler section but the that's pretty much the only thing and of course it's a little bit uh, boring at the start with the characters they were a little bit uh, generic at the start but uh, of course as you get to know them get to know their uh, personality and how they're acting and what's really the key uh, belief and core value that each character has it starts to make sense and you can really start to treat them as instead of characters in a fantasy novel, just uh, people in a team that work together and sometimes don't work together uh, to and then they have their fights and then at the end of the day uh, you get to understand the group and what makes them so important to the story. So that's it for the non-spoiler section. Now we're getting into um, spoilers. So the Raven consists of uh, seven mercenaries and uh, they're regarded as the best in the, um, the country uh, and particularly the western part of the country because uh, the west and the eastern part of the country is essentially split in half and they're at war. Um, well, they were previously at peace and then the threat is that there's a war coming. Um, so these guys are mercenaries and they're really good and they're very loyal and they're very uh, you know, tight-knit. And then um, the only issue is that and there's some character deaths along the way uh, that mean that this group that was originally you know, renowned uh, changes. And they encounter a, a wizard um, and he is is responsible for essentially triggering the mo events that lead them to fighting and trying to stop this war um, and fighting the villains. So the members themselves are they're a little bit boring. There's essentially uh, five like normal humans, a barbarian, and the very last one is an elf mage. And it's a bit generic, you're like, oh, okay, everybody's sort of like Boromir. <laughs> and then there's like four Bor five Boromirs, uh, one Gimli, and a Legolas. <laughs> or, or one Aragorn, one Gimli, one Legolas and four Boromirs um, and it, it's a bit, little bit generic at the start but as we go on um, some of these characters die and then there's changes to the group dynamic and they get new members and uh, then you know the situation changes and the stakes are increased um, and then that's that's when it really starts to kick in. Um, one of the characters I, I didn't like 
at the start, which is a Herat Coldheart the Barbarian. He's a little bit annoying at the start, and uh, there's a reason why he's annoying, and it's because he he's not that particularly well versed in anything outside of fighting. So he's a barbarian, so he that's all he knows. And he can get a bit boring and a bit repetitive at the start, but it makes sense. And he, and he starts to grow on you, actually. Um, you don't find him that irritating as you go on. Uh, another character that I didn't like was uh, Densa, which is the mage in it. The uh, Not the elf one, the wizard that sort of uh, triggers the events and he's a bit annoying at the start too but once again he gets much better and you actually start to enjoy the dynamic that they have that he has with uh, the raven oh, book nearly fell. Um, with the raven you start to enjoy how he interacts with them and eventually becomes a part of the raven and how his uh, loyalties shift from like a power hungry uh, wizarding group <laughs> to the group of mercenaries. Um, and finally, I didn't like the character Arian, who I thought was uh, good. She was She's the only female character uh, in The Raven, which is a bit um, one thing I didn't like, because I thought that the, not just in The Raven itself, but in general in the story, there could have been more female characters, because it kind of gets boring. <laughs> To like say, okay, here, this is this guy, this is this guy, this is this guy, and you're like, who? Um, and I think that if they had more female characters, perhaps it could uh, change the flow of it or uh, make it more distinguishable. Um, and as a result, Ariane is the only female in the Raven, and she is uh, ability wise really cool and interesting. But her personality is horrendous, and the entire time, even in the second book that I'm currently reading, even in the second one, I'm this far, I have that much left to finish, and she's still not the best. Um, but other than that, the magic system is really good. Magic... Uh, is, is well explained and it's explained in a way that it's it's technical uh, it's not like oh you're just born with it and you wave your hand and you do this and it's done it's like no you go you train and the people who are almost like the Jedi the people who are have that aptitude how it can see what they call mana which is magic energy um, when they can see and feel and interact with that mana then they join a college, and there's four colleges, and they each have their different, um, they call it law. They each have their own sort of system of uh, understanding and using that manner, and they also have their history is written differently, and the way that magic progresses in this world is very similar to how um, knowledge is gained at universities in the real world like there's there's research groups there's teams and they do uh, experiments research and calculations and everything and then they use that manner and they manipulate it in according to these calculations experiment and then create new spells or new magic or uh, get discoveries and then that's written down for the history of the college very much in the same way that uh, you do research for a university today and I thought that was very good it's very plausible because it makes sense that certain certain people would have uh, specializations in different areas and then therefore uh, they would or would not do research in a particular area so I think I really like the magic system in this one and it makes sense why they're not too overpowered uh, they they can do what they can do but there is a limit to it and of course it's just like uh, doing an activity or strenuous exercise like there's only so much mana you can manipulate at one time and you have to sort of recharge your batteries and and sort of really get that stamina back 
um, the action is, is good. It's uh, very graphic in the sense that it's it almost plays out like an action movie where um, they describe how the characters move and how they cut and how they're dodging the attacks and then it's not too elongated so if, you, if you're not into that it's not too much and it uh, flows really well and the perspective yeah the perspective does change um, between characters only if the scene changes so there's a, there's a couple of major battles as the war begins and starts it's there's like the leader of uh, this section is more based on geography so it will focus on the raven and when the raven are not here something else is happening then they'll switch perspective to um, other characters like barons or generals of the army where it's relevant and uh, the minor characters in the story are actually then they're not as um, fleshed out of course but they are very important they're still pertinent to the storyline and they're not just sort of oh here's a character and just chucked aside for the sake of it um, the minor characters they play a really key factor in uh, establishing sort of the urgency and the impact that the main characters have and also uh, serve as sort of motivation for them and uh, really uh, to show to the audience how important the story that the main characters are part of and uh, how important that actually is. And um, in, in that situation uh, the magic is, is openly used and understood and it is actually used in uh, battles so there's a good blend of action and fantasy and uh, they have special uh, regiments or uh, battle tactics that make sure that the magic is utilized as well as possible and um, you know you have mages at the front and then they will do uh, shielding while the people, the cavalry or uh, whatever at the back, if there's a siege, they will they will use that magic. It's not just like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll do a little bit, a little bit. No, they, they use the magic and they use it uh, well and in conjunction with everyone else. And uh, there are elves in this world, um, but they're sparse. And it's, it's designed to be sparse because the... Um, the out of this by the same author, James Barclay. Uh, he, I actually read the trilogy about the elves before I read this one and it sort of goes on to explain about um, how things like dimensions and, and how different worlds out there are and how uh, the elves came essentially uh, from another world and had the dimension and how they came there and, and it sort of describes all of that and that's why they're sparse because there wasn't that many that came and then they don't their main homeland is not the land that this story is set in so um and that's very interesting and the uh, dawn thief which is the name of the book is very interesting because the dawn thief is the name of the spell that they're trying the raven are trying to um research, understand and then finally use because it's believed to be the most powerful spell ever and they have to retrace the steps of the creator of that spell and uh, understand it and be able to use it effectively because if it's used incorrectly of course everything gets destroyed. Um, so there's this really good sort of almost technical aspect of it that it's like okay you need to understand the spell well enough without ever having to cast it before. You need to understand it. And uh, the character, the wizard, Densa, who starts all of this, uh, essentially his <laughs> research area and his expertise is specifically to find this uh, spell and understand it and cast it effectively. So that's 
it's it's a really interesting and very uh, almost scientific way of approaching magic, and I really like that. And um, this uh, book is is would be recommended if you like this action adventure fantasy style. It's not as um, shocking or gritty as A Song of Ice and Fire, um, which I really like because I, I hate The Song of Ice and Fire. I hate, I've read four of those books and I hated it, so, um, and I had to stop reading the fifth one. But it's got an ensemble that's a main group of people that you really like and um, sort of like the Justice League or Avengers and even if you play video games, um, like how Knights of the Old Republic or Mass Effect are in that there's a group of people and they all have um, areas that they're good at. There's one guy who's good at tracking and one guy who's like a stealth uh, thief, obviously the barbarian and then there's the leader of the group and he's, uh, he's got a good mysterious background and, and it gets explored throughout the thing, um, throughout the story and of course there's the elf who's like the uh, magical support and uh, and then later on when we get more mages in the group uh, it's a very good and well balanced um, team and you have an archer and you have a, a, like a healer it, it, and, it's, and it follows this standard sort of uh, fantasy ensemble group um, a little bit like Dungeons and Dragons and all of that, but um, I think it does it really well, and it's not jarring. And so, yeah, I uh, I think that's about it. Uh, I would recommend it. I am currently reading the second one, um, and when uh, I finish that one, I'll let you know, and we can go from there. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, you can follow me on social media or whatever, or... Um, subscribe if you like if you if you don't like it's all good um and yeah that's about it thank you so much see ya